Welcome everyone to our Winds of Change training webinar. We're very pleased to have Cheryl McNamara with us again and willing to share all her wisdom on meeting with your representatives. And glad that you could make it out. We are also recording this webinar so that we can share it with others after the fact. So with that, let's begin. Cheryl. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon or good morning, uh, depending on where you are, of course. Um, uh, welcome. Uh, we're here, of course, to talk about uh, meeting with your uh, elected representatives. And of course, we're gearing up for uh, the big uh, winds of change, specifically education for reconciliation um, campaign um, and meeting our representatives uh, around this. Um, however, I'm going to keep this webinar pretty broad as well, so this could help with future campaigns or current campaigns you might also be working on. So I'm just going to move on over to the, the next slide. So what we're going to cover in this webinar is, is methodology, um, as well as setting up your first meeting, what that looks like, and uh, we'll end with resources. Um, Shannon's going to do some housekeeping on education for reconciliation, next steps, um, and of course we will address any questions that you may have. All right. So uh, I should uh, share a bit of my background. What is the media coordinator doing leading a webinar on meeting with your elected representatives? Well, in my other life, I have founded and co-lead the Toronto chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. And uh, I guess in my time, six years uh, meeting with representatives in Canada and the United States, I've met with over uh, 50 representatives. Um, with Citizens Climate Lobby, uh, they have borrowed a methodology that is uh, from an organization called Results. And uh, Results started in the United States um, and in 1980 and has broadened to uh, many countries, including Canada, with the objective to mitigate uh, poverty and hunger worldwide. And they have been behind such initiatives as uh, microcredit loans. Uh, so Citizens Climate Lobby uh, just borrowed their methodology, which I will share. Okay, so methodology. Uh, what does it take to be an effective lobbyist for a specific issue? Uh, well, really, the big, big takeaways are you need to be very focused and you need to hone a relationship with your political representative. Uh, and hopefully work with an, within an organization that is people on the ground meeting with their elected officials too on that specific ask. So, um, and I have been in meetings with representatives with other organizations um, that really didn't have quite a sharp focus of what they wanted. And the politician really pointed that out in a very diplomatic way that it was really, really important to come in with a very specific ask. Uh, and I've heard a number of politicians reiterate that. Um, so if you go into a meeting with a huge laundry list or even a laundry list of say three things that you want the politician to do and then uh, have a meeting and leave and expect them to do that, you're likely going to be disappointed. It's really important to walk into a meeting with something that's very, very specific. That's going to be a catalyst for change. Uh, with Citizens Climate Lobby, we focus on a very specific carbon pricing methodology. And we've been doing it since uh, 2009. With uh, Winds of Change, right now we're focused on education for reconciliation, advancing uh, the TRC recommendation 62.1. Uh, that's all what we're asking for. Uh, of course, it's going to be nuanced depending on the province that you're in and how far your province has advanced in making sure that the full 62.1 is implemented. Um, so coming in with a focus and not giving up is very, very important. Uh, that is uh, kind of key to success. The other thing um, that we do in terms of methodology is a thing called a laser talk. Um, laser talks are provided for you. They're a short little um, uh, uh, 
text on paper, um, basically summing up the quintessential important thing that you want to convey. The laser talk is not meant to be memorized. It's meant to be read over a few times uh, with your colleagues or to yourself in the mirror. And the idea is to get some really key information into your head in a very uh, kind of conversational way so that when you are meeting with your elected official, even your brother-in-law uh, over dinner, uh, when they're asking you about certain things, uh, this should come out easily for you. And, and a perfect example uh, to give you, when I first uh, went to Washington, D.C. To, to join the lobby efforts there, um, my very, very first meeting was with the office of then Senator John Kerry. Well, you can imagine how nervous we all were. <laughs> we didn't actually meet with the senator himself. We met with his, um, his aides. Uh, but for a lot of us, it was our first meeting. And I had this assumption that Americans were very confident people. Um, when we walked into the meeting, we all were very prepared. And I thought, I'm going to be the note keeper. Um, so I don't need to say much. I'm the Canadian. Uh, I'll just take the notes. Well, we got in there, and the, the person who was supposed to lead us off froze. She was so nervous and I abhor a vacuum. So uh, nobody was stepping in. So I just jumped in and I just started to talk to them. And um, I realized as I was talking that I was actually making sense, which really surprised me. <laughs> um, but uh, I really credit that for the work that I did on practicing the laser talk. Um, and we will provide you with a laser talk on education for reconciliation. Um, the other thing that you want to be always, always is very polite, very diplomatic, and very persistent. Uh, you always want to try and get the second meeting and third meeting. You want to develop a relationship with your MP, and you want to educate them as well. You are very passionate about this issue. Um, indigenous rights is very, very important, and there's other issues that you're very passionate about as well. You know a lot about it. You've done your research. You can't assume that your elected official will be at the same level as you. So this is a real opportunity to educate them. Um, and uh, you know, for some people it's, well, they should know this issue. Well, they are dealing with so many different things. They're on several committees, likely, uh, and they have their own issues that they're very passionate about as well. Um, so this is just an opportunity to very gently, kindly, educate them and bring them up to speed. Uh, and the other thing to keep in mind as well, which is always a good idea, is to always develop a relationship with your representative aide. Um, I had a great relationship with the aide of my former MP. Uh, he was on side with what we wanted to do, but, um, but uh, the aide and I worked really, really well together, and that was very helpful. So, moving right along. So some of the best practices to consider uh, when planning uh, your meeting and while you're in your meeting. I mean, I, I have this picture of this, this kid wooing this girl, and in a way you are. Like, <laughs> you're developing a relationship. You're, you're wooing your, your MP. And for some of you, you may not really like your MP. You know, you may not, uh, depending on who that person is. But uh, if you do want to build a good working relationship, um, uh, there are just certain common sense things to, to keep in mind. Um, the first thing is, is really setting up the meeting and you really want to be persistent. For most of us, our MPs, uh, they're likely backbenchers, um, so it's going to be very, very easy to set up a meeting. Um, typically, whether it, you're, you're dealing with an MP or an MPP or an MLA, uh, typically they're in their constituent office on Fridays. So that's when you're going to set up your meeting. Unless, of course, it's, it's a reading week or, or it's the summer holidays. Um, if your MPP, MLA, or MP it just happens to be a cabinet minister, the likelihood of setting up a meeting uh, quickly uh, is not great. Just be persistent with the scheduler. Uh, keep following up. Uh, you will have success. Um, when Bob Ray was an MP, it took us a year to secure a meeting. Uh, and sometimes, uh, especially if you're, meet, if you're meeting with uh, an elected official who happens to be a minister, on the issue that you're concerned about, whether it be if it's, if it's education for reconciliation, then the education minister, 
meeting with the political, um, sorry, the, the policy makers as well um, is very helpful and you definitely want to uh, develop a relationship with them. Um, <clears throat> always do your research uh, prior to when you secure the meeting, you want to do your research. Uh, this is common sense, I know. Uh, you want to find out what their parliamentary roles are. I mean, are they, uh, are they uh, in a committee that is significant for the issue that you're working on? Uh, what's their voting record? Uh, that's helpful. Um, if you're working with uh, the federal level, there's this wonderful tool that you may know already called Open Parliament. Just Google it and that will provide you with, with great detail on, on um, who your MP is, their voting record, all that wonderful stuff. Um, the other thing, of course, is to visit uh, their website. Often they blog, so it's, it's good to kind of get a sense of what they're thinking about, what they're passionate about. Um, you want to determine how likely they are to support your ask, and you also want to find out what they have in common. And sometimes it's as simple as, if you're a parent, are they a parent as well? Uh, for climate change, this is very helpful. Um, you always, of course, want to be punctual. You want to respect their time. Uh, I'll go into this a little bit, uh, but especially around roles, but you always want to assign a timekeeper. You want to find out how much time you have, and you want to respect that. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a bit, a bit, bit more about that in a second. Um, there is a rumor going around that politicians love to talk, and I can tell you with my experience that that is absolutely true. They love to go on and on and on. And, and that's a good thing. It's a really good thing because while you're doing all this research on them, what they are actually able to tell you uh, provides so much more information, obviously. So uh, you want to offer them an opportunity to really talk about where they stand on the issue, what they think about, that sort of thing. Uh, and again, I'll get a little bit more into that. Um, clearly, you, you, you would want to listen attentively to what they say, obviously, to find out uh, more information about them and how you can proceed with them moving forward. But um, everybody likes knows when they're listened to. Everybody knows what it's like to be talking and the person you're speaking to isn't really listening. They're, 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 their mind is somewhere else. And um, often... <laughs> When a person is you know, speaking to somebody and they really think that they're being listened to, they'll go away thinking that that person is just wonderful. Uh, and, and that makes a lot of sense. So uh, if you want to really build a good relationship with your MP, you want your MP or your MPP or your MLA to walk away and go, I don't really like these people. <laughs> they're, they're, they're smart. They're, they're good people. And usually it's because they've really listened to you or you really listen to them. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is refrain from um, bringing up pet projects. Again, this comes into um, the point I made earlier about um, coming in with, with so many uh, different issues. Um, if you have another uh, campaign that you're working on, another issue that's really, really important to you, uh, that's very current, what you might want to do right after the meeting is just say, oh, by the way, I'm also working on this. I wouldn't mind setting up a meeting to discuss this issue. And quite often they're quite amenable to that. Um, uh, refrain from giving them a lot of material um, unless they seem really, really open to it. It's uh, You don't need to come in with a lot of material to give them because that can seem a bit daunting. Um, if you talk about, say, a document or a report or this or that and they seem keenly interested, this is a wonderful opportunity to reach out to them afterwards and go with it with an email. Um, and to feed them the information. And this is the education component. And this is kind of an ongoing relationship that you want to have with them. Uh, and then finally, after the meeting, uh, what you want to do, like after you leave, is um, send um, the official uh, a handwritten note. And this is something, it's always a nice gesture to get the people who are in the meeting to sign it. Um, and you might want to give it to the receptionist or just mail it. Uh, but that's, uh, that's just a really, really lovely touch. Okay, so uh, when, you're, when you have your meeting, congratulations, you have a meeting, um, you want to have a pre-meeting, so you want to prepare who's going to say what. Usually you have a facilitator, and this is the person who's usually set up the meeting. Um, and uh, so they're going to bring you together for a pre-meeting, this is maybe a day or two before. Um, 
and uh, usually lasts about a half an hour. And you want to figure out, you know, who's going to do what. So um, the facilitator, the person who's kind of organizing everything, this may very well be the constituent. Um, they don't need to be the one to leave the meeting, uh, but just person who's kind of making sure that everything is arranged uh, going in. Um, you want to um, assign somebody who's going to take notes. This is a very, very important role. Um, this is, should not be this should not be assigned to somebody who doesn't really know a lot about the issue uh, and is nervous to talk um, and just says, oh, that's okay, I'll take the notes. This really needs to be somebody who, who knows the issue very, fairly well and can take really good notes, very informed notes based on that knowledge. Um, you want to, the person, you want to assign somebody who's kind of welcoming. This could be the facilitator. Uh, it should be the constituent. Absolutely, it should be a constituent. Um, and they're the ones who come in. Thank you so much. Um, you know, introduce everybody, uh, that sort of thing. Um, you want to assign some people to ask specific questions. I'm going to get into to that to, into a second. Um, you want to assign somebody who's going to deliver the actual ask. This is what we're proposing. This is what we want you to do, and they can explain it further. Uh, and then you want to assign somebody who's going to provide the follow-up material. And again, this is usually the facilitator. Uh, okay. Uh, Note-taking is so important that um, I've dedicated two slides to it. Uh, and we, what we're going to do is provide you with a resource, uh, basically a document on um, these tips. So uh, why are notes so important? Uh, I mean, I, I think this probably sounds a little obvious, but it really helps us, certainly at Kairos, the organizers, to know exactly where the representative stands on the issue and our ask. Uh, so we can get all of these wonderful notes from you. We can review them, find out what the trend is. It just helps us strategize further. Um, and of course, they inform you as well. This is very helpful in future meetings with that representative. So, you know, you can review your meetings, what was said, um, and it's a good marker to know where where they are on the issue, if there are any kind of advancements. Uh, and it also is a, a reminder of what kind of follow-up that you, that you need to make with them. Um, common problems with uh, note-taking. Um, the note-taker talks about what Kairos members have said not a lot about you know what the elected official has actually said and <laughs> actually this happens i've seen this with citizens climate lobby it's a little frustrating um we can assume that you are going to be saying the right things but what we need to know is what response is from the elected official um the other uh problems that are common is using abbreviations that are not defined poor handwriting of course and just not enough detail Okay, um, so in terms of note keeping, some of the, the most important things to capture, any concerns that the elected officials will have about your ask, uh, questions that they have, um, it's just nice to know where their head is, is at currently, uh, any recommendations they might, they might provide you with in terms of, to help you advance or help you with your strategy, uh, points that um, the elected Sorry, the elected official found interesting about uh, about our ask and about you know the issue, uh, and who they work well with across the aisle. And across the aisle just simply means you know in other parties, um, and of course within their own party. So who can they go to about this? Uh, and also, what's good to know, and this is where your spidey sense kind of kicks in. Their body language, their, you know, the sense they get, were they really keenly interested? Were they excited about it? Um, that's really good to report as well. And this is something that you can um, check in with your other co-meeting um, um, members uh, about just to, you know, I got this sense about them. Did you feel the same way? And of course, you want to uh, record any action items uh, for the elected official. Oh, they promised to talk to so-and-so, or they're going to do this, or they've said that, yes, I'm going to read out the petition uh, in the legislature. Uh, this is all good to know, very important uh, to report. Uh, and of course, any action items for yourselves as well. 
okay, the meeting itself. So you got the meeting, you've done your pre-meeting, um, and here you are, you're sitting down, you're meeting with your elected official. Um, so, of course, you want to thank them. Uh, you want to briefly introduce yourselves. Uh, and it's usually, as I say, uh, the person who's doing introductions, who's kind of leading it. Um, then you want to ask the elected official how much time they have for the meeting. Oh, one thing that I did not mention, a very important role uh, that you need to assign somebody to do, and that is the timekeeper. Um, so somebody who's going to ensure that if the elected official say, I only have half an hour or I only have 15 minutes, uh, that you that they keep to it. So uh, five minutes, or sorry, 10 minutes uh, before the wrap up, that's when the timekeeper says, you have about 10 minutes. And uh, usually at that point, that's when you wanna do the ask if you haven't already. Um, so this is very, very important. And the, the, the nice thing about this is sometimes usually they only have half an hour because they have a, a meeting that follows uh, or they have somewhere to go to. But um, I've often been in a meeting where they say half an hour, and that's usually the standard. And then uh, the timekeeper says, oh, we have 10 minutes. And uh, the elected official will say, oh, I have a little bit more time. Uh, and that's always, of course, a very good sign. Uh, I've been in a meeting where a half an hour meeting turned into a 90 minute meeting. Um, and it was very, very good. The next thing you want to do, and this is really, really important, you want to acknowledge, appreciate, respect, and show gratitude for the work that they're doing. Often with politicians, we, as we all know, uh, they don't have the best reputation in the world, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, yes, they're bad apples, and those bad apples tend to get the media attention. What doesn't get the media attention are the good, hardworking um, politicians uh, that work for their constituents, that work on specific files. The folks that I've met, whether in Canada or the United States, the reason why they got into politics is because they strongly, firmly believe that they can make a big difference um, in, in our country, in our communities. Um, they're usually quite passionate about a very specific issue as well. So uh, you, that's why our, the research comes in, of course. Uh, so there's two things that we're gonna be thanking them for, specifically around education for reconciliation. Uh, the first one is um, where the, your province is at this point in time, what they've done so far to advance uh, TRC called 62.1. So thank you so much, if you're meeting, say, in Ontario, thank you so much for recently stating that um, you are going to be covering, uh, making mandatory in the curriculum, uh, the residential schools, the treaties, and the contributions of Indigenous peoples. Um, what we need to see, however, you know, and you'll get into that later, uh, but thank them for what they've actually done up to now. Because often, if you don't do that, what you want to avoid is the elected official saying, but, well, we've done this, 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 and this, and just going on and on and on about what they've done, which you already know. So the first thing you want to do right off the top is thank you for the work you've done so far and acknowledge specifically what it is. Uh, and that opens them up as well, because you don't want them to have you know, their, their backup. Um, and then look at what they've done personally as well. Um, it's really nice to be acknowledged for what you've done. And some of the work they've done to date, they're probably very proud of as well. So uh, acknowledge them for that. You're probably wondering, what if we're dealing with a politician and there's nothing I can think of that I want to thank them for? And that has happened to me. Um, there's usually a nugget somewhere, something that you can find. And it should be genuine um, when you provide them with that uh, that appreciation. Um, then you want to do a very brief overview of what Kairos is. Uh, most politicians know, but some may not. So just to give a very brief uh, overview of who we are. And um, the Winds of Change campaign as well, you know, to ensure that uh, the TRC calls to action are met. You might need to explain what the TRC is. Um, then what you want to do is specify the request, the request. Uh, that that you know the ask that you're going to make, and in, and of course with education for reconciliation, we want to support legislation that fully realizes TRC call 62.1. But before getting right into it, 
ideally what you want to do is say, but before we, we, we discuss this, we were curious to know where you are with, with this issue of reconciliation and the TRC and moving forward. Um, and that's our little intel moment. That's when you kind of want to hear very closely what they're saying um, uh, and not to engage too much except maybe to ask a question regarding clarity. This is prime opportunity for your note taker to take really specific notes. Um, before meeting, when you do your pre-meeting, you want to think of some questions uh, that you'll have. And with Education for Reconciliation, some general questions or you know, questions that you may want to consider. And you don't have to ask all of these, but uh, you know, what are your thoughts about uh, the calls to action? Uh, what do you think are the key priorities to make reconciliation possible? Um, what does reconciliation mean to you? And uh, what might be preventing you from supporting our legislation? And this might be a question that you want to ask later once you get into the ask. Um, uh, when you do your research, you're, it's going to help you uh, ask maybe a little bit more specific questions as well. And then you want to get into your ask. And uh, you know, 15 to, to 20 minutes into your meeting, this is when you do it. Um, you know, specifically as it written out what it is. Um, and then you're going to leave them with a leave behind. Now, they're going to ask you lots of questions, hopefully. Um, if you don't know the answer to any of your questions, don't despair. Uh, don't sweat it out. Um, sometimes that's, well, always, always, it is an opportunity to say, you know, that's a really good question. I'm not too sure. I'm going to get back to you with an answer. Um, and that's a great opportunity for follow-up, because this is an ongoing relationship that you want to develop. Um, we're going to provide you with the lead behind. It's going to be province-specific. Um, and then, uh, to just to wrap up, uh, ask them, um, uh, you know, you always want to ask them, how can we work with you to advance this legislation? Um, they're going to provide really great information uh, for you and for us. Um, how should we follow up? What are the next steps? Um, you, it's not like you want to set up a, a next meeting immediately, but you kind of want to get a sense of where, what they're going to do, what, you, what you're going to do. You can certainly, as a side ask, and this is going to be up to you and your spidey sense, to ask if they would be willing to read the petition in the legislature, and that would be awesome. Um, so you want to do a bit of follow-up around that. Um, and then you want to ask if you have time, you know, who do they work with in other parties? Um, who can they connect to with regards to this issue? Thank them for their time. And then, and don't be very, very, um, I need to really emphasize this. It's really, um, oh, I, I, sometimes you're in meetings and you do want to like kind of extend the time a little bit. What, what about this? What about that? And you know that you know, uh, you're a little over time. Um, what you want to do is to avoid that as much as you can. Just wrap up, show them that you really respect their time. You can always follow up with them afterwards. Um, and then post-meeting evaluation. Try and set aside some like 10 minutes right after the meeting. You can maybe go to a coffee place or, or somewhere where you're kind of outside and uh, do a bit of a... Um, uh, um, uh, post-mortem on um, on how the meeting went uh, and this is very helpful for the, the note taker as well um, and then you want to know where they are on the champion scale so what is the champion scale the champion scale is something that citizens climate lobby developed and I think it's brilliant it's really really very helpful um, where does the elected official stand on the issue um, and they set it up and, and Kairos is going to uh, adopt this if they are an A, uh, it means that the elected official does not feel that your issue is important and will not support your ask. If they're a B, they're ambivalent, or they think it's somewhat important, but it's not really on their radar, and they're not going to support your ask. C, they believe that your issue is really important, uh, but they're ambivalent, or they're not going to support your ask, or they have problems with your ask. D, they believe that your issue is really, really important, and they are championing your ass. So that's the champion. That's the champion, brother. Um, 
So why why is uh, a D not an A? Well, this is psychological. Usually when you think of Ds, you think, oh, you know, failure. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that we're giving those elected officials who, you know, are more challenging as much attention as our champions because we want to move them up the scale. We want to make, if you have an A, if you're dealing with an A, you, you want to make them a B. Um, that's the next level. Um, if you're dealing with a B, you want to make them a C. If you're dealing with a C, you, you need to make them a D. So that's that's kind of your objective with that elected official. Um, with Education for Reconciliation, um, I think you're going to get a lot of people who are quite open and very positive to this, uh, but you never know. <laughs> Certainly with dealing with climate change, we deal with a lot of A's. Um, we deal with climate deniers. Uh, not a lot, but we, you know, they're very clear. Um, with uh, Education for Reconciliation, uh, you might get somebody who, sorry to say, might be a racist, really. Um, you know, you, you don't know who you're dealing with sometimes. So, um, so it's just good to know, you know, who you're dealing with and what the next level is. And in terms of, of reconciliation, I think this is all part of that, right? It's, it's, it's that journey that we all need to take together and that we're wanting to take with our elected officials. So um, wrapping up, um, we're going to be leaving you with some resources. We're going to have it up on our Winds of Change uh, page. Um, there's going to be the note-taking form for you. Uh, we are looking at um, creating an online form that may happen or not, um, so that you could just uh, record things, report things um, online. Um, so we will keep you posted on that. But right now, we do have a form uh, that you can print off and uh, take with you. And then once you fill it out, to send it to Shannon Newfelt. The other uh, document you're going to have is a leave behind that's specific to your province, um, a laser talk specific to your province uh, that you could practice, um, the first meeting outline uh, that I shared with you or we, we went through, uh, you'll have it on a one page uh, to help you prepare for your meeting, and uh, the uh, tips on, on good note taking. So Shannon, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, ask you to join because I know that there is some housekeeping that you want to do regarding education for reconciliation. Thanks very much, Cheryl, for sharing all your wisdom on meeting with our representatives and for all those tips and the promises of all those resources that we will have um, ready for you and coming out over the next number of weeks and months. 